Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Before I start this video with what you see in the title, that will be the main part of this video, I really want to address it. I want to show you where I am. I am right next to the statue of one of the greatest novelist writers of Russia, Nikolai Gogol, who was actually inspired by Dostoevsky and Chekhov. Russia indeed has one of the greatest artists in any way, painters, musicians, writers, dancers. But I want to start this video with honoring life of a man who none of us knew about until yesterday, Aaron Bushnell, who was US Army pilot and who is no longer with us. I'm sure all of you who are watching me right now know what happened. As he was on the way to show to the world that even though he is US Army pilot, he's a soldier of United States, he does not agree with the policies and the genocide that is taking place in Gaza. And on the way to put himself on fire, that ultimately led to his death. He was saying, I will no longer be complicit in genocide. I'm about to engage an extreme act of protest. But compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. This is what our ruling class has decided will be normal. And then he was shouting when he was burning when he was on fire, free Palestine. When I watched that image, and many of you have seen it, if not all of you already, I put it actually in the community page, a short video with that, because he was recording himself and then I think, I don't know who recorded the other part of the video. I look at two people that were around him. One was trying to save him and was using the fire extinguisher and the other one was pointing the gun. And when I look at that image, I thought this is exactly where the world is right now. One is trying to save life and one, even though there is no, no harm coming from this soldier, is still pointing gun at him. I just want to acknowledge that man, Aaron, may his soul Rest in peace. And if this was the mission his soul had on this planet, I think you fulfill this. Very painful. I think we all understand the scale of this tragedy. So guys, let's go into the video that I have for you today with my news for you. The main part of this video will be about something that I have been addressing for quite some time and that is, while I'm putting my glove on my hand, how Poland and other countries will be dragged into the conflict with Ukraine. As I say many times, they will be doing everything to continue with this project, with this conflict. And yesterday, I'm not sure if you've seen that video, maybe you have. But if you haven't, I want to bring you the translation that I actually made. I came across the video with the Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico, I think you say, not Fico, Fico, I believe. I really apologize to all the people from Slovakia if I mispronounce his name. This video was actually translated from Slovakian into Polish, so I translated it from Polish into English for you. About 90% of this video and what this man said. It's very, very important to pay attention to what he was saying because this is just the confirmation of what we, most of us, if not all of us know, might take place very, very soon. As you know, now in Paris they are gathering and having those discussions how EU and NATO supposed to continue with Ukraine, help Ukraine, etc. 
So I hope you stay with me all the way through this video and listen to the word of this man who is a very, very rare example of a leader. And again, I don't know if he's a good leader, perfect leader in Slovakia. Sometimes you have perception that people are good, but when you really live in the country, you know better. However, the statements that he's making, you don't hear really from other leaders in European Union. So he said this yesterday on 26th of February, um, he was addressing this to journalists, what we should talk about. And now I will be very careful not to violate the obligations that result from the fact that we are talking about classified material. We are here to talk about new ways, a new scope of support for Ukraine in the coming period. I would also like to say that the convening of this council and the content of what was subject of secret discussion between the Security Council and the government of the Slovakian Republic confirms that everything in Ukraine is not going as expected. And in my opinion, officially presented by me thousands of, thousands of times, I will repeat it now. For me, today's council is a confirmation that the West strategy towards Ukraine is completely wrong. Despite this, I want to come in a constructive atmosphere. Despite this, I want to prepare. I am, I am co constructively prepared for these talks. But from what we have discussed at the Security Council, events are escalating step by step. I will only limit my, myself to saying that in Paris, the claims that several NATO and EU member states believe will send their soldiers to Ukraine on a bilateral basis, and this will be discussed. Before I continue, this is something I was trying to bring to you. I hope I did my part. This is where Poland goes. That's why in March, both Prime Minister and President of Poland are going to Washington to get the orders. This is why Polish Parliament, and please excuse me, my unprofessionalism at this moment, because I don't remember exactly what day. However, Polish Parliament is going to have a secret discussions that will not be uh, announced to the public behind closed doors. I will double check on the date and I bring it to you. I think it's already happening very soon, if it hasn't happened already. So let's continue, because this is not just about Slovakia. This is about EU and NATO countries, what they are planning. And they have been planning this. And I'm almost certain they're going to implement this. I cannot say more for what purpose and what these troops were supposed to do there. We conduct security assessments of such a proposal and cannot prevent individual EU or NATO member states from entering into such a bilateral agreement. On the other hand, we say that the expected goals will not be achieved, that there will be pressure on the president of Russian Federation, Putin, and on the Russian administration that the Russians will make concessions. On the other, on the contrary, he says, we, Slovakia, he means, believe that such a decision will lead to a huge escalation of tension. And we are talking about it very openly because from Spain, this is common sense here, from Spain, the conflict in Ukraine looks completely different than from Slovakia. Even when we look at the war conflict in Africa or when we look at what's happening in Gaza, we feel that it is a bit far from us. But in this case, since it concerns proposals regarding the direct participation of soldiers of NATO and European Union member states in this conflict in Ukraine, we ask ourselves where our security guarantees are. What could all this mean? What are the threats? And the escalation of tension, in my opinion, is simply enormous. I can say 
that there is an agreement between coalition partners and we assessed it in the Security Council that Slovakia, listen to this guys, Slovakia will not offer Ukraine the possibility of cooperation on a bilateral basis in the form of our soldiers going to Ukraine. No soldier from Slovakia will go to Ukraine. Before I continue, already you have a statement here, which means that's what they want to do. We will not make political statements now. We have this completely under control because such a proposal must be approved by the National Council and the government. And this is the agreement between the coalition partners who are at the meeting, because this is an important thing. We agreed that we will never give in to any ultimatum, proposal, blackmail to send Slovak soldiers to Ukraine. When he said this, I was like, wow. I don't know how good leader he is in other aspects of running the country. He's the prime minister. But this statement means a lot. Let me continue. Just flip the pages a second. We see huge security threats in bilateral agreements, which will be probably signed soon between NATO and European Union member states that want to send their soldiers to Ukraine. How do we want to help? We can declare that we want to help Ukraine by demining. Two machines were purchased by the Minister of Foreign Affairs. There are also other machines that we could use to help. This is non-combat help. I think that these machines will be extremely effective when certain steps are taken. I am talking about that there is not a single word about peace, only war, war, war. I cannot agree with such a policy because there is no military solution and everyone knows that in Ukraine there is no way to solve the problem militarily. We will, conf we will continue to help with demining, we will help with supper, tr supper training here in Slovakia because here we have special facilities for demining, but only in the territory of the Slovak Republic. The presence of foreign soldiers from NATO and EU member states possess a huge threat to security. They will be of interest of the Russian armed forces what if these soldiers are in the vicinity of the Slovak borders? How can our interests be protected if we have no direct air defense systems? All the Patriots were taken from us. We have here an Italian system with low efficiency and we have two quick tight cannons uh, provided by Germany but it's not an anti-aircraft anti defense, which guaranteed S-300. We will not send any weapons or ammunition. We will be clearly oriented towards humanitarian aid, not a combat help. There will be no change, and we have an agreement within the entire coalition. Please tell me where all of this is supposed to lead. It's not normal. I cannot simply imagine that there will be soldiers from NATO countries in Ukraine. What they are supposed to do there is the subject of secret information. I translated about 90% of that video for you. I will put the original video with the Polish, with, with um, Slovakian language and Polish version of it in the description box so you can watch it yourself. Um, this is serious, guys. This is not a joke. And I said many times before, that's what they want to do, especially with Poland. Now, how soon? Maybe part of it in March, maybe April. I don't know. But they're going to do something about it. Under that video, I saw comments from Polish viewers 
who looks like are very, very aware of what's going on and they say no to the war. So the only answer to is if there is a war and no one shows up, or at least majority of people don't participate in their scenario. Meanwhile, on February 8, I don't know if you came across this, the Ukrainian parliament has passed the first reading of a bill to tighten mobilization rules and force people to war. If approved, these rules will be allowed the government to freeze bank accounts and people's assets when caught dodging the draft. So if you don't want to go and die, they're going to freeze your bank account. I'm sure this is the system they're going to implement, probably in other countries as well. We have to have awareness of it, right? That's what they are planning to do. Uh, I hope you stay all the way with me to the end of this video. I actually have, I forgot almost, I have the comments of the day I'm going to read to you. But those words from Robert Fito, I think he na his name is Fito, you have to really take into your heart. This man, you could see how serious he's about those statements and he's able, he's going to risk his position in the government but he has to put it out so people are aware of what's going on. I would like to know your thoughts, guys. This is not a joke. It's going to be more escalation with Ukraine. I'm just telling you, just a matter of time. Comments of the day, or I should say the last few days, my, from my interview with Larry Johnson. This is from Find Liberty, who says, once you invite a bear to dance, it's not who decides when the dance is over. It's the bear. The next comment is from Ralph Bernard, 1757. All the war propaganda, all the screaming and lies and hatred comes invariably from people who are not fighting, said George Orwell. And the last comment is from my video yesterday from Angel, sorry, Angelo, well, it's Angel, Angelo Michale F3916. When the Nazis left Poland, they, bent, they burned it. That's actually the fact because I, my hometown was completely damaged, destroyed. When the Nazis left Poland, they burned it. When the Soviets left Poland, it was all build up and if people still don't remember how Poland looked like after Second World War it's very easy you can just Google it if you use Google or any other any other searching engine that will show you the scale of destruction Warsaw stretching where I come from other cities but guys that's all I have for you today um, thank you so much for watching my videos, for hitting this like, it really means a lot to me. It's free of charge and it helps the channel to be seen and recommended by YouTube and more people to pay attention because clearly not many people are talking about peace and like the Prime Minister of Slovakia said, only war, war, war. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like, leave the comments, I read them all. All the links to my uh, Instagram mailing list, locals community, you can become supporter there if you choose to. Buy me a coffee also, only if you choose to. I appreciate very much. Thank you, guys. And uh, yeah, I think there is PayPal and Rumble as well. Lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow.